now at five, one of the world's strongest storms slams into the Philippines. The nearly 200 mile per hour winds leaving a trail of death and destruction. Tonight, our chief meteorologist Jacqueline Bennett is tracking the path of the typhoon now. Grant Lotus has the dramatic images coming from the region. But first, Catherine Heenan puts into perspective the devastation for the island nation. Catherine. Yeah, well, imagine being told to brace for one of the biggest storms ever recorded. That is what millions of people in the Philippines were told not long before Typhoon Haiyan slammed into the central and southern part of the country. We know at least four people have been killed, but the death toll is expected to go up. Witnesses are describing the storm as incredibly intense. The winds gusting more than 200 miles an hour are shredding homes, knocking out power, leaving tons of debris and bringing pounding rain. As for the death toll, because of cutoff communications, it could be some time before we know just how many people died. But there are already countless scenes of struggle. One of the most dramatic stories to emerge involves two huge cargo barges battered by the storm, tossed around like toys. People on shore could see crew members waving, shouting for help. Rescuers arrived and tried to use rope to reach the barges, but had to turn back in the fierce waves. Crew members eventually jumped into the water, struggling more than an hour to reach safety. And just as it appeared it was all over, the crew realized that one man was missing. He is presumed drowned. Early reports of others drowning, at least two people electrocuted, at least one person killed by a fall tree. The typhoon has also triggered landslides and damaged and destroyed whole neighborhoods of homes. It is assumed the death toll will keep rising. No one in America can even imagine what a 195 mile per hour wind would do to their home. This is going to be a bowling ball that rolls right through the southern Philippines, devastating everything in its path. For 20 miles on both sides, there'll be nothing left. There won't be a home standing. And again, it is expected the death toll will go up. Observers are saying that really the only positive thing they can point to is the fact this storm did move quickly. There could have been many more casualties if it had lingered. Grant? Catherine, there's still images coming from the Philippines. Give us a sense of just how this is impacting the people and the property. Take a look at this picture right here. This is actually a home right here, a house being swallowed by that angry sea. And then you have debris just everywhere, littering the roadway here you see some people have emerged from their homes at this point to survey the damage this woman taking her two young children heading to an evacuation shelter and trees are down it seems like everywhere people trying to get the trees out of the roadways the long road to recovery and rebuilding begins Pam. Well, I'm here in the Cronford Weather Center with our chief meteorologist Jacqueline Bennett. She's been tracking the path of this massive typhoon since yesterday when we got wind of it. And where is it now? Well, now it's sitting west of the Philippine Islands. It's moving through the South China Sea, and it's going to be actually weakening as it moves through well, the glad South to hear China that. Sea. It's still going to be pretty strong, though. When it came into the Philippines again, it was a strong Category 5. And that's those categories are defined by wind speed. So I want to explain that real quick. Um, it left the Philippines as a Category 4. Four. Right now, it's a category three. The sustained winds are about 125 miles an hour, and the range of sustained winds for a category three, 111 to 129 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and track this out. You can see again, it's sitting just to the west of the Philippine Islands. The latest observation from this morning winds of 125 miles an hour now, but as it moves over the ocean here, it is going to be weakening because when it came into the Philippines, these types of systems, they thrive on very warm sea surface temperatures and over the South China Sea it's not quite as warm so it's going to be weakening to about a category uh, three a low category three as it makes landfall and you see that it's going to make landfall it looks like around Saturday morning moving through Vietnam uh, it's going to continue to weaken and weaken very very quickly you see already by Sunday it's weakening to a tropical depression so again the wind speeds by that point are going to be down well under 100 miles an hour the good news is it's going to continue continue to weaken and then it's going to move up through China it looks like as we head into Sunday late Sunday. 
Well, Jacqueline mentioned Vietnam and the Vietnamese American community is closely watching the storm's progress toward their former homeland. The killer typhoon is page one news in Vietnamese language newspapers and very much on the minds of these folks as they sip their coffee this afternoon in the little Saigon neighborhood of San Jose. But most say their loved ones are accustomed to bad weather this time of year and know what to do. Maybe the storm come, they maybe go higher and more, but we know it. Yeah. They know what to do. Yes, they know what to do. They can live with that for a long, long time. Every year in Mekong River, they go up about four or five feet, and then a couple of months they go down, and then on the coastal area, they go up almost one or twice a year, they go up more than a couple of feet, and then go down. You can get the latest on the typhoon path with the new Cron 4 app. It's available on Android, Apple, and BlackBerry. Plus, we have a special section on Cron4.com where you can see tweets and pictures from the devastated areas.